Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Welcome to the dojo. Today is uh, Jay Reads the News, and I've picked out, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six articles that are interesting if you are a driver. Hold on a second, let me have a little sip of my Nespresso. It is today, Tuesday, Tuesday, the 4th of February. At about, uh, let me look here on my Fitbit app, 2.34 in the afternoon. And it's, uh, gosh, there's a lot going on. A lot going on in the rideshare industry. So where are we going to start? Let's start with this one. CNBC, as coronavirus panic spreads, Uber and Lyft drivers of Asian descent are reporting Discrimination from drivers. Oh, drivers, you are not doing uh, doing a service to the rest of us and to our Asian brothers and sisters. All right, if you're not familiar with the coronavirus, I do, I know a lot about it because I was just in in Thailand, and when I was in Thailand, everybody's wearing a mask over their face, right? Uh, First of all, they do that anyway, because the air quality isn't great. And um, and, uh, China, which is, what, a thousand miles away from Thailand, uh, has this, uh, was the kind of the birthplace of this coronavirus, and it's become kind of a, a panic. So what I've read about the coronavirus is it's like a flu, and, uh, Really, if you're a healthy human being, it's not going to kill you. It's going to be like a flu. And, um, but if you're young or old, you know, then it could cause death, um, like a flu. Um, but apparently this can spread very, very fast. So there's a concern that, you know, so many people are going to get this, that there's going to be a huge number of deaths. And that's why there's such a concern. So what this article points out is that, um, Um, Lillian Wang was told by a Lyft driver who picked her up at the San Francisco airport that he had refused rides from people with Asian-sounding names. Other riders shared similar experiences as fears about the the coronavirus spread. Lyft and Uber say they have policies that are designed to curb discrimination. Well, the policy is you pick everybody up, right? Um, Now, I don't always pick everybody up. I have actually not picked somebody up if I thought they were so inebriated they were going to to, uh, spew in my car. Um, I've done that twice. Uh, Both times the person could hardly walk, and uh, I I looked at them, and I could see as they were walking towards the car. um, Actually, one guy, he couldn't even get to the car. He was leaning against the telephone pole, and he went to take a step towards the car, and then he kind of fell back into the pole. And that was enough. And then the second time I didn't pick somebody up, uh, it was a man and a woman, and the woman fell on the ground, and then the guy fell on the ground to help her up. And I was like, "No, no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, puke in my car. Uh, get the next person." But that's not discrimination. That's just good business. Not picking somebody up because they're they're Asian looking uh, is, is discrimination. And, um, you know, anybody, anybody who came from China, from the Wuhan area, whether they're American or French 
or Asian uh, could could have this virus. So, you know, it's not just people that look Asian, uh, because it's people who ca- who came from from China uh, to America, which, believe me, is not just Asian people. It's uh, people like me, right? And what I heard was that now people are getting uh, scanned at the airport. So I got kind of lucky because I missed the whole scanning process, which could have added a whole lot of extra time to my travel because my plane had a layover on the way back. So on the 30th, I flew from Bangkok to Hong Kong, and I was in the airport the whole time. And then from Hong Kong, I flew to San Francisco. And uh, some people told me I was going to get, you know, checked out when I got to San Francisco, but that that didn't happen. Um, even though I was sick, even though I had, a, you know, a flu symptoms, um, nothing happened. So my recommendation here is don't discriminate against Asians because um, there's just as much a chance that a Caucasian person has this as, uh, as an Asian person. So um, just do the right thing. Next uh, article is by, uh, let's see, Decrypt, Decrypt.co. And uh, the name of the article is The, De- the Decentralized Ride-Sharing Disruptors Taking on Uber. So I was really curious what this was about. And apparently there are some companies that are using blockchain uh, technology to create apps which are much more uh, driver-friendly and allow drivers to really kind of have their own business, set their own prices. And I'm not a technology guy, um, so I don't know exactly how these work. Um, But there's a company called Drife, D-R-I-F-E. It says Drife is one such app built on the EOS blockchain. It concluded around... Like other decentralized ride-sharing project, it claims to be giving back the power to the value creators. Its business model is built on taking zero commissions from the drivers. We believe when there's a driver who spends 14 to 16 hours behind the wheel, I don't know who's doing that. That's a long time. He deserves to take back all the income to his home. For him, it's about his livelihood. Instead, Drive will charge drivers an annual fee for access to the app. So I don't know what the fee is, but that sure sounds pretty great because then the more you drive, uh, the less of a percentage is you're paying um, for the service. So I don't know how blockchain works, but there seems to be like three different companies that this article references. Another project aiming to shake up the world of ride sharing is Arcade City. Arcade City. And uh, let's see, founder Christopher David conceived the idea of Arcade City while working as an Uber driver. After finding that Uber's terms and conditions wouldn't let customers exchange contact information with drivers, right? That was launched in Texas in 2016. So it seems as that as the technology is improving, uh, these companies are trying to uh, create something which could be really special for drivers. So I wanted to share this with you because it gives me hope, you know, that there's more than just Uber and Lyft and the way that those companies are working. There are people out there, smart people, putting together these businesses based on a different technology, which would allow us, the drivers, to kind of have our, our own businesses and not be dependent on an Uber or a Lyft to set prices and terms and conditions and all of that. So um, that's pretty encouraging. All right. Next one is uh, written by Vice, and it's called... Uh, Gig workers have nowhere to pee. Nowhere to pee. We're spending more money at restaurants than a customer would spend on the same order, and many of us would just like to wash our hands when we pick up food. So, uh, somebody I know, Christian Perea, uh, he used to work for the rideshare guy. Now he's doing his own thing. But uh, he posted uh, photos of Vivi's Cafe, which is a restaurant in Redwood City, California, that refuses to allow Uber Eats and DoorDash delivery drivers to use its bathroom. In the tweet, Perea said, this is how many restaurants restaurants treat gig workers for their companies like Uber Eats and DoorDash as subhumans. And if you look at the picture, it shows uh, the bathroom, you know, man and woman restroom, restrooms for customers use only. And then there's a piece of paper taped under that that says, and it's just like written with a Sharpie. It says, 
do not use if you are driver. Wow. I had no idea this was this was going on. But apparently there's a, a lot of restaurants that are operating this way. So, um let me see. This uh there's uh, I'm not ashamed to pull over and pee behind a building <laughs> and I'm not shy. If someone were to ask, I tell them why. I also keep a spare cup in the car just in case. Okay, so that's pretty <laughs> hardcore. Uh, <laughs> that person remains anonymous. Uh, uh, so <laughs> you drivers out there, you know, sometimes, you know, you just got to go. Um, my strategy has always been to go to Starbucks. So I carry a big, uh, you know, a Yeti a mug, my Yeti mug. And, uh, and I do go to Starbucks uh, twice a day uh, to get a drink. And if I have to go just to use the bathroom, I walk in with my cup. And uh, I've never had an issue, right? I've never had an issue. And I feel for the amount of money that I spend, you know, weekly at Starbucks, I should get bathroom privileges. So, and Starbucks are virtually everywhere. Now, some, you know, as you learn, you learn which ones have uh, better parking opportunities. Some of them have, you know, massive parking lots. Um, for example, for example, yesterday, really had to go. Um, the other thing you learn is how to hold it too, right? So um, it used to be, oh, I got to go, I got to go. Um, now I could feel like, oh, I really got to go, but I might not go for another three hours, you know? I could somehow kind of turn my mind off, you know, that I got a pee feeling can just kind of get turned off. And it's remarkable when you're not thinking about it, how you forget about it. And then when the opportunity does arise. So this happened yesterday. I was downtown San Francisco and then I got, um, and I had to go, but you know, downtown San Francisco, very difficult to find a place to go. So I picked somebody up and they wanted to go all the way to San Bruno. So in San Bruno, there's this wonderful uh, shopping center on Bay Hill Road that has a Starbucks and lots of parking and never that crowded and two bathrooms that are unisex. So um, super easy to go in there, order a coffee and, uh, and, and pee or do, do whatever you got to do there and then, uh, and then be on your way. So, you know, with experience, you know where all the places are. Uh, that you can go. Safeways. Safeways also have, uh, you know, bathrooms that you can use. Um, and there are a lot of Safeways around and they almost always have a big parking lot as well. I think a lot of it is just, uh, you know, being able to con control your demand, right? So feeling it and then you just got to realize, you know, sometime in the next couple hours, I really got to get to a, get to a bathroom. Um, but in a 12-hour shift, I may have to go once or twice, you know, um, if you drink regular coffee, that's going to have you going to the bathroom more often. Uh, cold brew uh, doesn't have the same effect. So it's much easier to, uh, you know, go, go less often if you drink cold brew. Little insider, insider tip there. All right, enough about peeing and bathrooms. Um, next one is by Quartz. Quartz. Independent contractors are already already finding ways to work around AB5. And one of the ways they're finding uh, to get around AB5 is to set up an LLC, which you can do pretty inexpensively here. And as I was reading down, down this uh, article, there's a, our, our very own Harry Campbell, uh, founder of the Rideshare blog, says he hasn't heard from too many drivers about setting up LLCs. What I've seen from talking to thousands of gig, work, gig workers and drivers is that a lot of people get into this line of work very casually, and they don't think about liability, and they don't think about insurance and taxes, he says. But Campbell notes, he has been finding more LLC-related questions lately from drivers who fit a certain profile, mainly those who drive on the side and have more assets at risk. They're curious about the liability protection offered by an LLC, right? So as an LLC, you, protect, you can protect your personal stuff. I have an LLC, um, so I'm, I'm actually quite familiar with it, and I've had this LLC since 2008. Campbell says the LLCs could be an option for more drivers in the future, especially if companies like Uber and Lyft lose their ballot initiative and AB5-related court battles. That could be sort of another ace up the company's sleeve, where I can really imagine 
that they would maybe even subsidize some of the cost of drivers forming LLCs, said Campbell. So what he's saying there is, is that if uh, Uber d- uh, does not uh, get a, a ballot measure, right, on the next, uh, the next time we vote, um, or if they do and they lose, and, uh, and the judges rule against them when it comes to them fighting AB5, uh, the next thing they could do is uh, say that they're only going to work with independent contractors who uh, have an LLC. Because if you have an LLC, you're more likely to be, um, and I don't know the, the legal side of that, but um, basically this article is saying is that if you form an LLC, it's easier to be classified as an independent contractor. Lawmakers have said that <clears throat> there will be changes in the language to address some workers' concerns, but California Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez, the San Diego decremat, Democrat, who proposed the bill, has defended it, saying the intention is to protect those workers who need it most. Okay, I just drank another little hit of Nespresso. Next article. To fight new employment law, Uber pits California drivers against each other. This is none other than the Washington Post. Critics call the name your price system a race to the bottom. So that's what I said. So I guess I'm a critic. Uh, Uber is arguing that the the changes establish driver independence. So I think I was one of the first to actually say this is bullshit, that this name your price is a race to the bottom, that this name your price and, and being able to fiddle around with surge is going to hurt drivers, not help drivers. And it seems like uh, a lot of people have gotten on that bandwagon and are saying the same thing. So uh, I guess that's all I want to say about that, because I think I've covered this uh, in a previous episode and in videos and things like that. Hey, and I don't know if you guys know this, but I did a video recently called uh, Jay Drinks Beer and Reads His Hate Mail. Go check that out. I did that in in Bangkok, and uh, it was pretty fun. So... I uh, just thought of that. All right. And the last article, Uber is retooling its app for California drivers. Lyft isn't. So this is from CNN Business. So I wrote an article and I made a video saying that, you know, Uber uh, is making all these changes and Lyft is going to do the same thing. But it appears I may have been wrong, Right. Uh, This article says, Lyft is singularly focused on passing a ballot measure that protects driver independence and flexibility while providing them historic new benefits and protections, a Lyft spokesperson said in a statement to CNBC, CNN Business. This is the balance our drivers and riders want, and we believe we will be successful when we take the issue directly to California voters. So that's interesting. That's what they say. And uh, we did an analysis, and we we found out that if this thing passes, it's worse for drivers than it is now. Uh, But the company line is that this is going to provide all these wonderful things for for drivers. But as we've seen over the last four years that I've been driving, every time these companies make changes, uh, it's no good for the driver. The only change that I've seen lately that has been good for the driver is what Uber has given us uh, where we, on the ping, we can see how much we're going to make and where the destination is. That's the only one that I really can say. That, that was a huge improvement. But everything else, changing the per mile, changing the per minute, changing the destination filters, all bullshit. All things that were touted as great for the driver, but in fact were worse for the driver. All right, the article continues. Lyft declined to comment on what Uber has rolled out. So they're saying Lyft won't even, won't even make a comment. Instead, the company pointed CNN to the spokesperson. Okay. Lyft isn't alone in staying the course in California. Postmates, Instacart, and DoorDash have also seemingly made no changes to their app in California. DoorDash and Instacart declined to comment. Postmates did not respond to requests for comment. So they're all taking this. They're just shutting up. They're letting Uber do what Uber does. And they're basically um, gambling that on their, their business model. Um, on a ballot measure. The daylight between Uber and Lyft here is particularly noticeable because historically the two companies have tended to keep in lockstep when it comes to adding new features given the ongoing competition for market share and workers. 
In 2014, for example, Uber and Lyft each announced the launch of carpool service within hours of one another. So that was exactly my argument. I said, of course, Lyft is going to do the same thing because time and time and time again, Uber does does a major change and the Lyft follows suit. But it appears that Lyft is uh, taking a different uh, strategy here than Uber, and it just makes this whole thing even more interesting. All right. So there you go. There's the news for you. Coronavirus panic spreads. Don't discriminate against Asian passengers. Uh, What was the next one? The decentralized ride sharing disruptor taking on Uber, right? Blockchain technology. Companies are trying to make, make our jobs actually what we want which is we can be true independent contractors and control our futures. Uh, The next article I read was, uh, gig workers have nowhere to pee. I encourage you to to use the Starbucks strategy. The next one featured our own Harry the Rideshare Guy Campbell. Independent contractors are already finding ways to work around AB5. Uh, The next one, to fight new employment law, Uber pits California drivers against each other. Go low, go low. And the last one, which we just covered, Uber is retooling its app for California drivers. Lyft is not. All right. You are all caught up on the news. All right. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it out there every day. I honor you. I thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad J saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.